Welcome to Mind Travel. My name is Murray Hittery. It's a pleasure to be here in Iowa. It's my first time performing in Iowa. Um, this is actually a uh, meaningful moment for me because in my 20s, I, after I graduated college studying classical composition in New York, um, I got into the technology world and along with my brother built one of the largest internet technology companies here in Iowa based out of Des Moines, a company called Dice.com in the career space. Uh, so I did that in my, in my 20s, late 20s, and had a blast doing it. So uh, came to Des Moines all the time. So it's lovely to be back now full circle, now with my music. I made a shift back from being an entrepreneur, while well, being a composer, being an entrepreneur, and then back to my music. I created Mind Travel as a personal practice for myself. It actually came out of my time being an entrepreneur where I used music. I had a piano in my office and would play at the end of every long startup day. And I found it to be an incredible way to create balance in my own life and manage the stress and the emotions that came along with that. And eventually that carried through to all aspects of my life, not just work, but of course, uh, the emotions that carry through all areas of our lives. And so as a composer, there's one fundamental question that I start with. I ask myself, what would the energy of the universe sound like? What would the energy of the universe sound like? Now, of course, we know that out in space, it's a vacuum, there is no sound. Sound needs a medium. It needs something to be transmitted through. And so it's quite silent in space. But I'm talking about something beyond potentially just auditory sound. I think of the entire universe as a spectrum of waves, of vibrations, of frequencies. Music, of course, being part of that. If we think about every level of existence that we know, we have on our everyday interaction through our five senses, we can experience wavelengths in various spectrums. Light, of course, um, is made of waves. We have electromagnetic waves that control our phones and allow us to send messages at the speed of light. We have microwaves in our kitchens. We have uh, brain waves that we're all emitting here tonight at different frequencies. On the smallest of levels, we have quantum wave functions that particles are expanding and contracting in a never-ending dance of waves. And on the grandest of scales, in just the past year alone, physicists have discovered gravitational waves, that the fabric of space itself is vibrating and waving through billions of light years. Quite remarkable. But beyond our five senses, there is a hidden universe. There is something that lies beyond what our five senses can perceive. So we have certain limitations in our physical material realm. Physicists teach us that there's this stuff out there called dark matter and dark energy that only about 4.9% of the known universe is made up of the stuff we can see, touch, feel that the 118 or 120 or so elements on the periodic table that we studied in chemistry class, that only makes up about 4.9% of the known universe. The rest of it is this dark matter and dark energy. Dark energy is that force that's continually pushing the universe in an inflationary capacity, expanding it and continuing to push it outwards. And so these lie beyond our perception. We can infer these. But physicists are deep in the study of these phenomena. This is a wonderful animation depiction uh, from Stanford University of what, of what this cosmic web of dark matter could look like. And all that black interconnecting lines is essentially the aggregation of that dark matter over billions of years. And the bright spots you see are the intersections of that dark matter, where it's manifested and created matter as we know it. Those are clusters of galaxies. We are in that part of it. And so you can see it's just a small fraction of 
the universe. So how do we bridge the divide between that which is known and that which is unknown? That with which we can experience with our five senses and that which lies beyond that. And as a composer, I use music. I use music to metaphorically achieve that, to put some sense of vibration, some sense of experience to my understanding of that. Physicists also teach us that there's this notion of the wave-particle duality, that light, as an example, is not just a wave, but they are particles as well, propagating as waves. And depending on how we measure it, we can experience it as particles and experience it as waves. And if we see, if we take a look at the piano and music as a metaphor towards that, we can see that music itself acts as both waves and particles. As I perform this evening, there'll be thousands upon thousands of notes all conspiring together to create a wave of music, an arc, a story. And each note is a particle in that experience. And so, again, vibration, frequency, waves. It was Einstein who said, it seems as though we must use sometimes the one theory and sometimes the other. Well, at times, we may use either. We are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light, but together they do. There's this inherent contradiction. Is it a particle? Is it a wave? And quantum theory tells us it is both. And it's the embracing of that that I find so powerful. And so tonight is about a shift in perspective. It's about how can we see things differently? In addition to the music that we'll be experiencing, there will also be images on the screen changing. And these images will look something like this. Now, this is a photograph that was taken in New York City. And seconds before, this is what it looked like. It was an advertisement on the street downtown. And I saw this and I said, I love those colors. It's essentially made of light. How can I see it differently? Can I even find beauty in something as mundane as a street advertisement, a street sign in New York City? And here's the same colors using light, using movement. The same with this image. Seconds before, it looked like this. And an image like this, another way to find beauty in even nature, a tree that we might just walk past any day of the week. And so as we go into the music, I invite you to create an intention for the evening. There's kind of two ways to experience this. There's the typical performance where there's an audience and a performer, and the stage kind of lends itself to that but I invite you to come to this in a different way, where as opposed to the relationship of audience and performer, we engage in a relationship of participant, as participants together in an experience. And yes, I happen to be the one at the piano playing, but the experience is going to be one that I call a real-time composition, meaning I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be playing tonight from start to finish. It'll be a continual musical journey We'll be together for about an hour, and I invite you to experience it as feels right for you. If you feel like the visuals are helpful and you like to open your eyes and take it in, wonderful. If you feel like closing your eyes and kind of letting the music take you, that's wonderful as well. There's no right or wrong way to experience a mind travel. And so part of this is what it feels like inside which is different in those two scenarios. And Part of the way to access that is to ask yourself a question that you can reflect on throughout this evening. One of my favorite philosophers, Alan Watts, he said that you are a function of what the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is a function of what the whole ocean is doing. 
And it's that notion of the individual and the collective, the particle and the wave, that I find so fascinating and where I like to experiment and explore in the music. So I invite you into that space with me. We are all these waves that emerge in individuality, yet we are all part of the same ocean. It was the French composer, Claude Debussy, who said, abandon yourself completely and let the music do as it will with you. Even back then, 150 or so years ago, he was sensitive to this notion of music having a force that in some ways lies beyond the five senses, that it allows us to tap into something richer, something deeper. So I invite you into that space. And when we go into that space of deep listening, of presence, there's the opportunity, as Debussy said, to dissolve, to dissolve ourselves, our notion of ourselves, our identity, and find this empty space, find this nothingness. It was the Maharshi who said, the important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could become. That there is an endless number of possibilities for our becoming. And it is that state of being that he talked about so much which is where all of that is possible. Tonight is about possibility. It'll be about possibility musically. I'll be exploring textures and melodies and harmonies at the piano, and together we can use it as a sense of possibility for ourselves. With that, I'll leave you with one final thought. As I go into the music, there's a vision, visual that I use that I find helpful, and if it's helpful to you, please use it. It's that of placing a leaf into a river. The river is a wonderful metaphor for life. The river starts calm, as small trickles and streams, and eventually builds into roaring rapids and turbulence, sometimes hitting rocks, finding its way around, getting stuck in eddies, but always the leaf finds its way down the river and eventually to merge with the ocean. That will be essentially the life journey of the music tonight, the soundtrack of life, the exploration of what does the universe sound like. So with that, we'll begin. And as I mentioned, it'll be a continuous experience without interruption. At the end, once the music stops, I'd like to ask us this evening to just sit for a couple of moments in silence before any applause or kind of shifting uh, in commemoration of the events in Manchester, and we'll just sit in that space at the end. So with that, let's begin. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.
Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Could raise the house lights a little bit so I can see everybody. Take a minute to come back into my surroundings. Take a deep breath. And we have some time for some questions, so there's two microphones on either aisle. So we'll start with you. Please share your name with the group. And oh, oh, I'm uh, Jim Turner. Hi, Jim. I, I just first want to say thank you. Um, I saw the advertisement in the dome. I had a moment where I was thinking, well, could it really be what this advertisement is saying? And shall I go? It was all of what the advertisement said. Thank you. And much more. I'm so, so glad I went. Feeling a little guilty, a friend asked me, you know, asked me to go with him, and I wasn't sure. He didn't go. I did. I feel like the lucky one. I do want to say it just kept going through my mind. A favorite song from over 45 years ago is called Killing Me Softly. Mm. Strumming my pain with his fingers. Yeah. Killing me softly, or telling my life with his words. And it kept going through my mind because it was like an experience of a lifetime, but a very good experience, like a, a, a rebirth, a feeling reborn. Um, there are spiritual circles that walk the labyrinth. I don't know if you've ever heard this. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's the musical equivalent hmm. of walking the labyrinth, and use that quote if you want to. <laughs> I, I Thanks will. so much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, you know, the music, the journey that we go on, I mean, there's there's elements tonight that, uh, you know, were very, you know, kind of surprising and, and very fresh to me. Um, and I did spend a lot of time in a very quiet place in the music. Um, quiet volume-wise, but for me it was very broad in terms of um, its presence. And, um, you know, the, these musical journeys um, that we create are... Um, they're very much intended to be provocative and not just a uh, let's have some relaxing music kind of thing. There's a lot of spa music you can go by and enjoy. <laughs> That's not what this is. This is about uh, really punching through. And um, like I said at the beginning of the evening, I mean, I've used this practice, I call it a practice, as a, a very critical practice and tool for myself. Um, in all areas of life, including some of the greatest uh, grief that one can imagine. And, you know, uh, I hear a lot that it's kind of this notion of a soundtrack to my life, right? I hear other people saying that. And I always wonder, like, how could it sound like the soundtrack to your life and your life and, and my life, and, you know, at the same time? And, and you know, in considering that idea, it it brought up this notion that ultimately we all have the same story uh, with different details. We're born in different places, we have different names of fathers and mothers and first boyfriends and girlfriends and first kisses and you know places we went to school. All those details are different and unique but this story, the, we generally experience very similar things as human beings in this experience. So um, I think the abstract nature of this, right, is we're able to layer on kind of our individual details. So it becomes a storytelling a soundtrack, albeit a, a subconscious storytelling of sorts. So for me, it's about how do I kind of, kind of get into that space of the kind of eternal story that is, is always, it's just always that story playing itself out for everyone at a different time. Thank you. Yeah, please. Hey, Murray. Um, I you, met you. Please share your name. Yeah. I'm Michael, Michael Barnard. We, we met maybe three years ago in Hollywood at the David Lynch Foundation House. Oh, yes. At a group meditation. Right. And you told me about what you were doing and you That's were getting right, ready. I that. 
and I kept missing your concerts in Santa Monica. I'd and you're here now. In and Iowa. you came here. <laughs> so it worked out very well. You did I'm it glad. the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a technical question. Mm -hmm. how, how, is, there, is the top off the piano? No, it's right there. And right it, there. Why, why don't no, you I'm have it? <laughs> what? It's, it's off, right? <laughs> no, the, um, I, I asked to remove the top. And, and in most of my performances, I, I asked for the lid, that's the, the lid to be yeah. removed um, for a couple of reasons. First, so that everyone can easily see the projections, but, um, but also it gives me very open access to the piano in which to, um, to kind of get in there um, yeah. with, for different, for different what, what's called prepared piano right, or right. doing stuff to the strings themselves. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and for those wondering kind of what was going on, did people hear the kind of percussive sounds, percussive sounds going on? So um, these, are, these are mutes, they're rubber mutes that I use to, um, to mute, to silence uh, different strings. Um, and I'll, I'll do single strings or whole clusters of strings, uh, notes, so that I have options as I get in there. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with them, but I know that it's an option for me. Um, and so, for instance, the whole bottom um, octave is muted. And essentially, you know, the piano is, is it's, it's a, you know, she's a wonderful uh, instrument. Her personality is such that there's really two parts of her personality. One is uh, as a string instrument, of course, right? And you can exploit that with, you know, with the pedal. And, and then there's uh, the percussive nature of the piano. And it actually has hammers. We call them hammers, and, right? And they strike the strings. So, to me, it's about how do I exploit and explore both sides of the personality, right? There's the big kind of pedal, open, string, luscious orchestral sound, and then there's the percussive nature of, and it, it's different things. One's, for me, a bit more primal and kind of just kind of just hammering on that final push um, at times. I just love that sound. Um, and then contrast that with the huge open orchestral sound of the piano as well. Yeah, please. I'm Pam from MUM. I Hi. thought you made a most beautiful river of sound and it was just fantastic. Thank you, what kind of sound? I didn't get the word. A river of sound. River. Well, yeah. thank you. Sorry about my... And um, I th what I liked about it was that there was no, apart from the odd single notes that you brought out, it was beautifully uh, it's like um, tampura playing with the Vedic music with, this, with, with the sons. And um, I have two questions. One is, um, how, how do you reproduce it? I mean, apart from recording it, you, you can't write it down, can you? <laughs> and the other question is, how did you make those beautiful images? Because um, you said some of them would be real photographs, not photoshopped. I could see things that you might have photographed and blurred the image by, by zooming in like car lights or water or yeah. sunlight coming through leaves, et cetera. So how did you do that? Great, um, thanks for the questions and the comment. So um, I'll start with the images. So the images, um, as I mentioned, all the, the first half, if you notice there were kind of two halves of the images, a bit more static and slower moving and then, and then more dynamic. I didn't want to talk about the dynamic part in the beginning because I didn't want to give it away. So, so um, the imagery starts with those photographs and there's quite a few of them that are um, deliberately put into various order in terms of color and movement. And then about halfway through, it shifts to this more dynamic movement. And that's using various algorithms and uh, video editing software with those libraries. Um, and that was originally created dynamically with me playing to create those, um, those timings. So I, I can't always travel with that whole system and there's a whole, there's a guy that runs it and um, uh, so I can't always travel with that. So that's a recorded version but it was originally created improvisationally. Um, I'm now in the process of creating a new um, digital system where I would have a system of pedals next to me here where I can actually uh, and, and the microphone would actually listen to the music and drive that more, more, um, more dynamically in relation to what I'm playing. So it does have that relationship, and that's how it was created originally. So yeah, 
and you know your comment about the river. I mean, this is it's really how I how I think about it. And then that kind of merging into the ocean, at, you know, at times, it just just kind of where form spills over. And the visuals really attempt to do the same thing as the music, right? Where form um, becomes borderless, uh, objects becomes borderless, right? And we know from physics that there really is no kind of true edge to this. Um, and even when I touch it, uh, I'm not touching it because of uh, electromagnetic force. There's actually a space in between. It's pretty remarkable. So um, it's about exploring those ideas uh, and gaining access to those incredible ideas of how the universe actually works that we have so little access to in our everyday experience, just by virtue of our limited senses. That's it. Did you have any other? Did I answer your questions? When you were tapping, were you, were you tapping keys to make the, that tapping, or were you ta tapping the top of the piano? No, that was uh, these keys, as I was mentioning, with the mutes. So the strings are oh, oh, okay. suppressed. So you, you were tapping the, the keys, but you yeah, muted the, the strings. Yeah, the strings are suppressed so that I can. Yeah, I got it. And then just changing the rhythms and exploring kind of in there. Cool. Doing Thank different you. things with that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Uh, any other questions or, or comments? Did people have, find themselves going with their eyes open most of the time? If you had your eyes open or eyes closed? Eyes closed? Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Good. Um, so we did record this evening. Um, I want to thank Werner. Uh, there, where is he? Where is he? Where's Werner? Thank you, Werner. Um, he recorded uh, this evening marvelously with some incredible equipment. I very much look forward to the recording. We have an incredible nine-foot Steinway piano here in an incredible hall. So uh, I have no doubt it came out. Um, high quality. So we'll edit that, and I'd like to make it available to all of you for being here as a complimentary gift. And so just make sure we have your email on the way out. Um, there were those clipboards to put your email. So if you haven't, please put your email there, and once it's edited, we'll send it around. Um, and we'll be in touch, and I hope to be back in Iowa again soon. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Brian and to Tony and to Tori in the front and the rest of the team and Tony. So thank you, everyone. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.